Hello guys and welcome back to GTR2 and round 12 of the 1993 British Touring Car Championship with our second visit here at Alton Park. Now, if you remember last time, on June the 3rd we had round 5 here. Uh, we'll take a look back at the first lap of Alton Park and we'll make a couple of comparisons. But if you remember last time, the track wasn't the greatest, it wasn't very well optimised and it was more like a rally stage than a race circuit. But we'll just have a look back at the first lap of the uh, of the race, round five, and then we'll get started with this race. Oh, and I almost missed a start. Trying to drive on this circuit with the gearbox or the uh, gear shifter is incredibly difficult. And I'm still not that good enough. So I'm just going to take it steady. I'm just going to try and bide my time and get as many points as possible. Now, this corner here is terrible and we seem to have a bit of frame issues with this circuit as well I've noticed but um, yeah I, I really can't wait for this race to be over uh, we're down into sixth currently and I'm gonna have my work cut out of <laughs> my work cut out especially doing the replays because this race is going to be filled with incidents. Oh, there <laughs> you you see what I mean. It's uh yeah, this is basically rock climbing the game. Rock cli climbing simulator 2018. And regardless of how slow I take the corners, the AI go up my chuff. Seems like everyone is playing it clean, which is surprising. But yeah, for some weird reason, this this track is still a work in progress from what Fury has told me. So um, the AI do have a huge advantage, but it's impossible to get a very good line going. And yet yeah, someone's gone, so... And you can see the car just comes straight off the ground, going up through Deer Leap. So as you clearly seen there, the track was incredibly bumpy. The AI did struggle a hell of a lot. But I'm glad to say things have slightly changed, and you'll see very soon. But before then, let's join Fury and Kazan, as always, for the starting lineup for Round 12 here at Alton Park. Round 12 of the 1993 British Touring Car Championship is a return to the picturesque Alton Park circuit in Cheshire. Hopefully a slightly less dramatic than the earlier first meeting of the season, so let's have a look at the grid. It's a BMW pole but not a front row lockout this time. Steve Soper heads Tim Harvey with the Renault 19s returning to near the top of the championship. Jochen Winkelhock and Alain Menu are row two BMW and Renault again. Peugeot's recent upsurge in form continues. Ian Flux and Eugene O'Brien lock out row three. Kia Fodor in the Nissan is next on row four, followed by John Cleland in the first of the Vauxhalls. The top ten are made up of David Leslie and Patrick Watts, the Mazda again showing its pace. The Ford Mondeos continuing... Still a fairly new project with more to come, Andy Rouse on row 6 alongside Wynn Percy's Nissan. Jeff Allen is next in the Vauxhall and then it's Dan Bartlett's Toyota. Row 8, James Kay and Julian Bailey, the Toyotas. Row 9, it's Will Hoy and Harry Nuttall. Row 10, Paul Radisic struggling in the Mondeo and Rob Gravitz Peugeot. Followed up by Ian Ashley's Vauxhall and Bobby Bird and Rose Toyota. Row 12, Ian Kahn in the Vauxhall, Bob Berridge in the Ford Sierra, and the back of the grid made up by the two Dynamics BMWs, Alex Portman and Matthew Neal. Awesome, so here we go then, getting ready for round 12 of the 1993 British Touring Car Championship, and we are... underway. Oh, and wheel spin from me. But not too bad of a start. Go on the outside of Jeff Allen. Now, let's see if that bump going into Cascade is still there. Hmm. Ooh. No, it isn't. 
as James K slams on his brakes. Uh, yes, as you can see, this track has been ironed out slightly. That is because Fury actually got permission to use the laser scanned version of Orton Park, and he's been working absolutely tirelessly to get it working and up to standard for this race. So a massive thank you to Fury. Uh, there's still a few little issues, little graphical issues, or uh, the frame rate does tank a little tiny bit. That is purely because that there's so much more uh, graphical entities that have been added into the track. And uh, yeah, it does uh, affect the frame rate a little tiny bit. But once the field spreads out, then it's absolutely fine. Um, another known issue is that the AI do tend to spin occasionally going through Nicker Brook, but it is only very rare. As my braking zone, yeah, I need to get used to the uh, braking zones because I really haven't had much practice on this circuit. So, uh, yeah, if my driving style is a little bit off, then you know why. But yeah, he's worked absolutely tirelessly. He got the permission and he's been trying to get this track optimized uh, for this race and of course for the mod as well. So we don't have to worry about that stupid Toka race driver conversion anymore. That track is now officially gone. But he is still working tirelessly on the mod and everything else and it is coming together like a lovely jigsaw puzzle. Piece by piece is being put into place. Um, and this is the reason why I'm using my flappy paddles rather than the gear shifter this time. Uh, purely because I haven't had much practice and it's just easier for me to uh, change gear with the steering wheel rather than uh, take my hand off the wheel and mess everything up. So, not to worry. We're still in 14th place where we started. And just take things a little cautiously again, make sure the tires are warmed up efficiently. So we got Will Hoy and Julian Bailey right behind, the teammates in the other Karinas. Four Karinas line the stern. James K, myself, Will Hoy and Julian Bailey. But yeah, look at this, the, the curbs don't launch you into the uh, stratosphere. But Fury's going to be uh, working on some more little graphical updates for me. Or not for me, sorry, for the circuit. To give it that true 90s feel. But this is as close as we're ever going to get to the real Orton Park. That is uh, words from Fury himself. And he's been there multiple times. He's actually gone to watch the British Touring Cars at Orton. And he said this is a very authentic representation. So you're not going to get any better than this on GTR 2. That is for damn sure. And again, my braking is a lot to be desired at the moment. Going wide every single corner. I'm sure as the race goes on, I'll, I'll increase my speed and get a bit better. But for now, this is more a testing session. I can look back on the footage, write down... Uh, any known bugs and so on if uh, anything needs to be ironed out but so far so good I've not encountered anything major and uh, a nice points haul would be welcome after our abysmal double retirement last time at bloody knock hill so I'm welcoming some good points and we're leading the independent class at the moment so hopefully you can stay there Yeah, the braking zone there. Oh, and the ass end getting a little squirrely. That's right. And when Percy is right at the back, it seems like he's had a bit of an issue. But I don't even think the voxels of Cleland and Alum are going to have any problems with this track. There's no real areas where the voxels can just roll spontaneously.
Ah, oh, see, understeer. Understeer a plenty. That is not because of the track, that is just because I suck. And we are actually down on power this weekend as well. My engine isn't all that great. And uh, I'm a bit worried that it might blow up before the end of the race itself because it is only on 1% of engine power. And if that goes, then the engine blows. So I'm going to be trying to take it steady, not stay on the rev limiter too much. Or do that. Oh, no. Oh, luckily we didn't get completely bogged down like we did here last time. Able to get out of it fairly quickly, but we have lost a position to Ian Ashley, who is now leading the independence. I'll try and get that position back. That has dirtied my tyres though, and my grip levels have gone down a little tiny bit. Oh. Yeah, this is what happens when you get a new variation of a circuit. You do know, but have not had much practice on. Qualifying was a bit of a pain as well. Um, the sun was really low in the sky in every corner you go around. Uh, you were getting blinded by the light, so I couldn't find my braking zones at all. So that was fun. Right. I'm going to put my head down and try and get some positions back, so if I don't say much, you know why. yellow flag in certain sector. Not sure where though. Must have been just a spin. Everything has been cleaned up. Makes me nervous when I hear that because I think, oh my god, please don't tell me the voxels have rolled again somewhere. But no, everything seems to be in order. Oh, very peculiar line going through there.
slowly gaining on him. Now only f five seconds behind. Or six seconds behind, whatever. Ah, that corner I can never get right. Yeah, 5.2 seconds now behind Bobby Verdon Row. So let's see if we can at least make up one more position and do something exciting. In this race, at least. Like, overtake someone. Keep turning in way too early for that corner. Loses me a ton of time. Now you can see some of the frames skipping there just a little bit. Again, that is purely down to the track. It's still being optimised by Fury, so that should all be fixed by the time this track is released with the mod version 3. had really many problems with this circuit we've had no major incidents or anything so that is a massive plus and we're on lap 16 of 18 so only three to go
17. Two laps to go. Okie dokie, coming up to the final lap, and I must admit, this track has gone flawlessly. This race has gone flawlessly. Uh, we haven't had any big accidents. Uh, my driving sucks, but that hasn't changed ever. Um, Cleland and Alum haven't rolled, can you believe? Um, so yeah, on the final lap now, and this race couldn't have gone any better, really. This was more a test, so I wasn't really worried about how many points I was going to get. I seriously just wanted to test this race and the track just to make sure that everything is up to spec and to report any feedback to Fury. But yeah, I can safely say that this track is a massive, massive improvement compared to the previous version of Alton. And I am very thoroughly chuffed. And at least we're going to score some points this time, rather than the double retirement at Knock Hill. We'll try and forget those races, shall we? So, yeah, not too bad. I don't think we've had many people spinning at Nickerbrook either. I don't think we've had any people spinning. At Nickerbrook. We've had a couple of uh, instances where they said, oh, the yellow flag is out, but there was no debris on the circuit or anything like that, so I have no idea. And it makes it easier for me, so I don't have to put in any replays. No, don't you dare. Don't you dare. <laughs> wow, if I'd have done the same as I'd done at Knock Hill and binned it on the final bloody lab, my god, I won't be happy. But, um, yeah, no replays to so actually put up for any incident, so that's going to make my life a hell of a lot easier. So, there we go. That was a race at, well, Alton Park version 2, I would say. Finished in 21st. Not the greatest performance for me, but at least we get second place in independence. And there we go, then. So, not too bad. Um, the track, like I said, still needs a little bit of work. There's still some frame rate issues that need to be ironed out. And um, this, that, and t'other. Uh, Fury is going to be adding some tire barriers and stuff on that side, and there's a few little things that need to be tweaked here and there uh, to get it fully optimized. But yeah, as far as I can see, this track is an absolute belter. So yeah, absolutely fantastic. Well done, Fury, for your work. And with that, we'll hand it over to James from Jam Sankith Gaming for the final points positions and the championship standings thus far. After a fantastic race, Steve Soper wins ahead of Tim Harvey's Renault 19, Winklehock in third, Eugene O'Brien with a Peugeot 405 in fourth, Alain Menu fifth, and Keith O'Dor rounds out the top six in the Nissan Primera. On to the privateer race results now, and Ian Ashley wins ahead of Dan Bartlett's Toyota Carina ahead of another Vauxhall Cavalier, Alex Portman in the BMW finishes ahead of teammate Matt Neal, and Berridge finishes in 6th in the Ford Sierra Sapphire. 
On to the standings after round 12 is Steve Soper, 113 points ahead of Winklehock on 105. Only six points separate Menu and Leslie and a point between Bailey and Harvey after today's racing. On to the privateer results now, all this point standings. Dan Bartlett is ahead of Ian Khan's Vauxhall Cavalier GSI, who is ahead of Ian Ashley and another Vauxhall Cavalier. All three BMWs are in a battle for fourth with 17 points separating them. In the Constructors Championship, it's BMW Motorsport way out in front on 218. Ikuri across Vauxhall and Renault are tied on 109. Toyota is on 80. Then you have the Cavaliers and the Nissan Primera. And there we go then. A massive thank you to James of Jam Sankith Gaming for the race results and point standings. And we will be back in three weeks' time on September 16th for round 13 of the championship. That comes from Brands Hatch Indies. So, as always, thank you very, very much for watching, as ever, and I will see you next time for round 13 of the 1993 British Touring Car Championship. Take care.